And then I, also a student of international relations and government, suddenly saw the bigger picture to my artistic crisis. It was just like the growth dilemma. We in the Western world had hit the limits of growth. It was time to change our outlook. Time to start thinking about how to apply meaning. So I became aware that space and sound totally influence each other and that composers are very much obsessed with putting the right notes, making the right timing for the music, but they don't care about the right space. In my view, the problem was in the beginning there was no analytics, there were just ethics. Today there is only analytics, no ethics. I think your mission is key mission in the current transitions. I think, as you said, all of you, the world finds itself now at the crossroads. And these crossroads are as important as 1850, where we started the Industrial Revolution. And the departing point for the next revolution, or transition, or global transformation, whatever we use it, is not exactly clear. And I think that your dialogue, because you are dialoguing across three major sectors of the society, is a key to transition. There were huge uh, advances that were brought upon us thanks to science, also huge advances brought to us thanks to economics, but now I feel we are in a time where we see the limits of it. And why can't we go and perform at a conference, a place where it's relevant? Um, again, there's no funding for work like that, but I, I will make it happen. I just know that it has to be done. I became aware that the power of art and music is to really bring people in the present and open them up for perception, which is a prerequisite. It's a condition for any change at all. So after that, I felt much more responsible. Thank you, because I think this is a start of something which needs to be supported, which needs to be nurtured, which needs to be uh, happening much more often. So I would like to encourage you, support you, and thank you very, very much again for this fantastic afternoon. What is Yasa about? about holistic approaches, about combining disciplines, getting out of the silos. So there is really so much in common. In April 2013, Yo-Yo Ma, one of the world's most famous cellists and arts advocates, said something that summarized the journey I had made without quite realizing it. Artists are trained to pay attention to the smallest possible detail, and this enables them to make sense of the biggest possible picture. And I'm pleased to welcome Gloria here tonight to tell us how she sees being trained as a dancer and scientist to our mission. So here I was exposed to the rational in my academic, and the irrational in my professional life, two worlds that now seem to be clashing in so many places we look.
When people think about Syria right now, they think about basic security and food. Why do you think that art, um, that your work, art, is important for Syria right now? I can say the same sentence as what Gloria said. Art, it's food for the soul. We don't also need food for the body. Of course, it's very important. But also, we are a human. In those hours when I started to doubt myself in this project, I remembered Kennedy who said, we did not go to the moon because it was easy, but because it was hard. We believe that the collaboration between science and arts could bring change, perhaps change in the mindset of all of us, of every single citizen, because after all, the transformations will be done also at the level of the individual agendas. Millennia passed with this dual message of being both conquerors and stewards. When populations were small and resources plentiful, the incongruities could be mostly ignored. However, recently, tensions emerged between our desires and the boundaries of our planet. Practices that worked for us in the past are now becoming dangerous. A new interpretation is needed from a sea of different voices existing in the world. One that considers fairness, compassion, limits, kindness, and courage. How can we as a species learn to prevent instead of respond to a crash? Would you stop driving to live in a sustainable world? Would you stop eating meat to live in a sustainable world? Would you give one dollar a year to live in a sustainable world? The link between knowledge and action seems to be missing. It's a race against time. How can we create an enlightened sense of mutual responsibility so people and their governments act in ways that enable sustainable development? We must learn to measure the health of our systems, their fitness, their adaptive capacity, the equality of opportunity that they generate, their overall health. And with these tools of measurement, we can then find the sweet spots to optimize our systems, our companies, and civilization itself, so that we can generate a field that generates and supports life itself. I think that everybody has heard now many times that we have, uh, we have a creed last year, 17 goals for the sustainability. And uh, then we asked that, have you understood it? Now, you have seen the dance. Have you felt it? Uh, of course, we have studied the subject with our brains, but have you seen it with your heart? Have you understood that you need both your brains and your emotions? And it's not enough that we do that. scientist and have nothing at all to do with dancing actually but when I got the opportunity of joining this project I grabbed it because I thought that from time to time everybody should make something crazy but at the end of it I found that it wasn't crazy at all it made a lot of sense so inspiring be in this free flow of ideas of creativity we all learn from each other we create something better we improve on each other's ideas you will see here a 
the premiere of a collaboration which I think is unprecedented. Four anonymous players sit in a game lab. In the nature of man, we find three principal causes of quarrel. First, competition. Second, diffidence. Third, glory. The first makes men invade for gain. The second, for safety. The third, for reputation. Game theory, even though it deals with the most serious matters on earth. Just as probability theory grew from games of chance and is used today to describe the physical world, game theory took over terms from poker and chess. Terms such as strategy, player, move, and payoff to describe social interactions. Huge amounts of matter, energy, and information circulate around the globe in a fast-moving flow propelled by human interactions. If player A does not contribute, and B, C, and D do, then the common pool consists of 60 euros. It is time to come back to our dramatic situation. Our world is almost destroyed. Can you restore it? to bring solidarity, to bring respect, to bring dignity, to bring tolerance to a world that really is full of such tragedy, such atrocities. We've almost lost our way. Uh, where is our humanity? And this evening, I want to bring us just a little closer. Different cultures and individuals, different cultures and individuals, different cultures and individuals. 
This will require fresh solutions and willingness to take intelligent risks. Intelligent risks. This will require a new perspective on how we value ourselves, others, and the world. Are we ready to leave no one behind? It was a day of chemistry, that Saturday afternoon in the Museum of Modern Art in Vienna, where Thomas Sedlacek, Gloria Benedict and I found all these exciting links and opportunities to bridge the world of science and analysis to the world of art, imagination and storytelling. But what came out of it was an eventful journey where I could experience, taste and deepen the openness and clarity that appears when science and art meet. The space that Professor Pavel Kabat created for the Arts and Science program at YASA resulted for me in many projects, new contacts and collaborations in Luxembourg, in Altbach, Amsterdam, Toulouse, Stockholm and New York. It made me aware of the incredible potential of alchemy between knowledge, research, imagination and beauty. Dance is a kind of language and this is what fascinates me. We use dance here to express the ideas of evolution, of natural selection, of cooperation, of reciprocity, of cooperation with the future. You form a line here and in this line then this one person receives help and then the other person receives help and so there are different ways to do it and many people sort of get it wrong, sort of they have the upstream reciprocity idea is that I help you, she helps somebody, she helps and so on. This is going forward, it's called paying forward. Uh, but the mechanism is actually the other way around. So the mechanism is she helps me more and then somebody helps to help her.